Hello children, welcome to 5th day VBS. Are you all happy? Yes, are you all ready? I meant are you all ready to welcome Timmy also? Okay, Timmy, Timmy where are you? Come out. Hi uncle. Hi Timmy. Timmy, today something is very special. I know. What is that? 5th day. After fourth day comes fifth day only. I know that. There is something special about it. What is that? Today is the last day of the VBS. Last day? Yes. What yes? Why? Why you are teasing me? I am crying. You are not crying. <laughs> this is crying, huh? Yes, uncle. Cry nicely. <laughs> What? You are not crying. Yeah, I don't cry. You only told I am going to cry. You also should cry. Why I should cry? Because today is the last day. Last day means you should cry, yeah? Yeah. Why? VBS is coming to an end now. VBS is coming to an end, but my friendship with the children is going to begin. Ah, huh, really? Yeah. Even for me. Even for you, then you should not cry. I should not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not like laughing, this is like coughing. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Timmy, you better be silent, then only it is good. Not good, eh? Now only it is good. Now, fifth day, last day, VBS is there. And we all are here to say bye-bye to each other. Bye, bye. Bye. Today, programs are there. Oh, programs are there. Today, also programs are there. Hey, today also programs are there. Uncle Tang. What? Today also programs are there. Oh, huh? hey, I only told you. Oh, you only told me. Come on, what are the programs? Uh, today shall we go for some uh, sports activities, some shopping and all that. Hey, no. Then what do you want? Sing. I want singing. I want dancing. I want uh, that. I want uh, this. What is that? I want that. I want uh, this. You know, no? Action song, and then story, and then Gangrigas, and then character, and then my missionary story, and then I don't know. And then I don't know. <laughs> and then that's all. Okay, uncle. Come on. What shall we do today? Before that, do you know what is the theme today? I don't know, uncle. It is choices. What is that? Joy. Jaya. What I said. Remember? Joy! Hey, how did I finish? I finished with is. A Joyce! Hey, not Joyce, man. It is choice. Choice! Choice! Yeah, choice. Choice means what? You can eat nicely. Chuck, 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 chuck. We can eat nicely. The chops we will eat, no? Chop, chop, chop. That one? Ah, yeah, that one. Hey, that is not, man. That is chops. This is choice. I don't know, uncle. Okay, today's VBS, we are going to learn how we can take decision for Jesus. Means what? Means making choices. Oh, that's all. Huh? More are there. First, we are going to do singing. Yes, come on. Jessica, auntie. Jessica, auntie, auntie, come quickly, come quickly.
Timmy, now a beautiful story about how to make choices. Really, uncle? Yes, Auntie Sriti is going to tell us about how to make choice. Auntie Joyce, ah, sorry, Auntie tell God choice. Hello everyone, I'm going to be sharing another story from the Bible with you today. Again, a different way of glorifying God. I'm going to take you back a long time ago to the story in the Bible from the book of Genesis. Now, when I say Genesis, we think creation, Noah, but a little after that, we come to, you want to take a guess? Abraham's life. We all know that song. Father Abraham had many sons, right? But I'm not going to focus on Abraham's life. I'm going to be talking about his son, whose name was, yes, Isaac. Now, in Genesis chapter 26, Isaac was in the land of Gerar, which is the land of the Philistines. He had already come to the promised land which God had given his father Abraham, Canaan. And in Canaan, he was in Gerar. Now, in that year, there was a famine in the land, which means there was no food, there was no plants, the plants were dying, and people had to go elsewhere and get food. And he probably thought, hmm, let me go to the country that's closest where I can get food, probably Egypt. Because you know what? In Genesis 12, during his dad's time, the same thing happened. There was a famine and Abraham went to Egypt and his dad probably told him that. So he's thinking, oh, maybe I should go to Egypt for my family as well. But you know what God tells him in Genesis 26 verse 2? Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to your father Abraham. Strange that God would want him to stay back in the land where the famine is there, but he knew that God was with him, so he obeyed. Now if you go down a couple of verses, it says... In 12, verse 12, Isaac sowed in that land and the same year reaped a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. He began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Who would sow seeds in a famine? He did it because God told him to. Sometimes God will ask you and me to make choices that didn't make sense. Look at Noah. He asked him to build the ark even before the rains came. Or anybody in the Bible for that matter who had to make different choices in their lives based on what God told them. God's voice and leading in your life will help you make the right choice even if it doesn't make sense to you. And when you do it, you will reap the blessing of making the right choice. Not just you, but everyone around you as well. You can be a blessing even if the situation around you is hopeless. Like the famine in Isaac's time. Everybody was hopeless, but God blessed Isaac and probably Isaac was able to then share his plants and crops with people around him. Right? So every right choice that you make is like that seed. I'm going to show you that. A seed is so small, you can't even see it, right? Imagine, according to that verse, he sowed one seed and God gave him a hundredfold for each seed. So if you sow one apple seed, you're getting a hundred apples. That's amazing, right? So with one good choice, there's a hundredfold blessing. And we don't just make the right choice just for the blessing. We make the right choice because we know that's what God wants us to do. Obey him in making the right choice. His word says, obedience is better than sacrifice. To obey God, to listen to his voice. What are you telling me, God? Should I really hmm, say something bad about that girl when she's not here? I don't think that's the right choice to make. Hmm, let me walk away. That's like sowing a seed, right choice. Hmm, mommy looks tired. Maybe I should go help her in the kitchen. Right choice again. Seed has been sown. 
my sibling seems to be so sad. Let me go check up on her. Hey, what's happening? Are you okay? Right choice again. Well, hmm. I think I had enough of this. I'm just going to go and shout at that boy because he was just irritating me. Maybe I should punch him in the face. Mm, wrong choice. Nah. Right? So when you have God, there's another verse in the Bible which says where you will hear him and where he says, this is the way, walk in it. Ask him to help you to make the right choices every day. And before you know it, you'll reap a hundredfold. There might be a plant like this um, in your life as well. Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful that you are with us and you lead us every single day of our lives. Jesus, we know that you want us to make the right choice every day. Help us to listen to your voice and take those steps. Make those choices with you. We cannot do it on our own. We are weak. Hence, we depend on you to lead us. Help us to obey you every day of our lives, no matter what it costs. In Jesus' name, Amen. Timmy, now, memory verse. Memory verse. I know what happened to you. What happened? Your spirit is down because you told me you will tell me the memory verse. Not one day you told me about it. I told you, no. What you told? Tomorrow. Yeah, you told tomorrow from day one you are telling. Today I am telling. What you are telling? Tomorrow. Timmy, this is very bad. When will the tomorrow come? Tomorrow will come tomorrow only. You know, shall I tell you something? What? Tomorrow never comes. Don't tell lie. Hey, tomorrow will come. The children will know that. <laughs> tomorrow will come. But tomorrow VBS will not be there. So what? Even I can tell memory verse myself. You, to yourself you will tell memory verse. Yeah. But that is not memory verse. Memory verse means you should tell others. To others? Huh? Then all of you come home. Oh, all of you go to Timmy's place. He is going to tell memory verse. If they come to your home, will you tell memory verse? Yes, uncle. How you will start? I will start as... Uh, tomorrow I am going to tell memory verse. See? This is how you will start if you go to his home also. Better don't go. Simply you are cooling my legs. Because you are not memorizing the memory verse. At least today's memory verse you learn. I will try, I told you. Okay, you try. Today's verse is from Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. Can you please repeat after me? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Shall we say it one more time? Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Now, we will learn crafts for the last day. Last today, craft, something should be very, very important. Yeah, very important only. And then, even Missionary story. Very important. Yeah, about making choices. Correct. Tell me choices. No, I won't say. Why? Because every time I say it goes wrongly. It goes wrongly. Okay. Hi kids. I hope you're having a great time at VBS learning about God. Are you ready for today's craft? Okay. So today's craft is something called Warly Art. Okay. W-A-R-L-I. Warly Art. And Warly Art came from this small place in Maharashtra and um, it, it depicts, it shows um, social life, like the normal life that these people live. And that revolves around farming and cattle and children and um, women carrying, doing their work, men doing their work. And so Warly Art is art about that. Okay, so it's a simple art. It's easy and it's neat and it's a very, very 
beautiful now bali art even though it came from a small place in maharashtra has grown and people all over the world recognize it okay so today we're going to learn to do bali art and i hope you enjoy it as much as i did
while learning modeling okay so uh, you can like we saw we can do it on cups and we can do it on envelopes you can also do it on um, fabric you can do it on a dress uh, you can try it on a dress, you can try it on tablecloths, you can try it on tumblers, you can try it on as wall hangers, you can try it on your verse next to it, frame it and give it to someone, you can make greeting cards out of it, okay, so there's a lot of things that you can do with bodily art. I hope you had a really nice time, uh, I hope you enjoyed what you learned in craft and I also hope that you've learned a lot of things about Jesus that will help you in your lives, okay, bye, have fun. Hey everyone, I'm Caleb and today I'm going to tell you a story. But before we go into the story, let me ask you a question. Have you seen a beggar? Yes, you know, sometimes they come and they ask for food or they ask for money. They may come home or they may be on the roads. Now imagine 400 beggars. That's a lot of beggars. Imagine all of them sitting down together and listening to one man talk and what was this man telling this man was telling something interesting he told them all these days i have given you the money that i could give you but now i want you i want to give you something even better i want to tell you about the love of jesus who was this man who was talking to so many beggars at one time this was henry martin and he lived more than 200 years ago. Today's story is the story of Henry Martin. Henry Martin was born in England in, uh, more than 200 years ago. He was born in a place called Cornwall. And as a young boy, he loved studying. He went to school and he was really good at studying and he enjoyed it. And then after some years in school, he went to college. He went to study at a college in Cambridge. Now, even at Cambridge, Henry loved studying and he was really good at it. But he had a friend called Kempthorne who said something very interesting. Now, Kempthorne told him, study not for the praise of man, but for the glory of God. This seemed a little strange to Henry because everybody used to tell him that he's such a good student. But Kempthorne told him, study not just so that people tell you that, but for the glory of God. Now, Kempthorne was a good friend, so Henry thought, okay, I will listen to it. But he did not understand it. Now, during this time, there was a tragedy. Henry's dad passed away. Now, Henry had already lost his mother at a younger age, and now he lost his father also. Henry was very sad. And so he decided to do something that Kempthorne was doing on a regular basis. He started studying the Bible. And as he studied the Bible, he met Jesus. And he fell in love with Jesus and his life was never the same. During this time, Henry made some new friends. He became friends with a pastor called Charles Simeon. He also made a new friend called John Sargent. And together they used to pray, they used to talk about their love for Jesus. Now, do you remember I told you that Henry was really good at studying? Well, he happened to be the best. He was the best math student in all of Cambridge. In those days, he was called the Senior Wrangler, which was the best title he got. And Cambridge was one of the best places to study in England. So almost the whole country, he was like one of the best students. And so he had to decide what to do. Everybody was excited to know what Henry Martin is going to be a great scientist, maybe, or a great discoverer. He is going to study something amazing. But Henry was going a different path and that surprised everyone. During this time, Henry was struggling to, with the idea that he could be poor for the sake of Jesus. He told that I could not consent to be poor for Christ's sake. He wrote in his diary one day. But then he got hold of a book called The Life of David Brainard. Now, David Brainard was another missionary. And as Henry re started reading the story of this missionary, he was so inspired and he wanted the same love for Jesus that David Brainard had. And during this time, when he wanted to be like David Brainard, a missionary, Charles Simeon was telling uh, Henry and 
John Sargent about the need for missionaries and pastors in India. Henry thought about it for a few days and then he decided he is going to be a missionary to India. Not everybody liked this. They all thought that he was wasting his life. They said that you are so intelligent, you are so bright, you are such a good student. You should do something great, not go as a missionary. But Henry said, no, for the sake of Jesus, I will go and be a missionary. But he did not immediately get permission to go to India. He needed permission from the government to go as a pastor. And so during that time, he was serving as assistant to Pastor Charles Simeon. And he was working very hard. He was going and meeting people daily. He would go and sit with sick people, showing them the love of Jesus and telling them that Jesus loved them. And this was a good training ground for him. Finally, the call came to go to India and he went by ship. Those days, people used to travel by ship. Now, journey by ship was not safe back in those days. Maybe some pirates will attack. Maybe some enemy country will attack. Maybe storms will come and your ship can get turned over. And so they used to travel in big groups. 150 ships, 150 ships traveled from England all the way to India. It took 305 days, almost a year, but finally Henry reached India. He reached Calcutta, now known as Kolkata, in West Bengal, and then he started serving there. Now here he met another missionary called William Carey. Now Henry started helping William Carey and his friends in translating the Bible. Now quick note about translating, what does it mean? Now the Bible was actually written in Hebrew and Greek. But we don't understand those languages. So many people understand what it means and they write the same meaning in English for us or maybe in Hindi or various different languages. And that's what we read. Similarly, when Henry came to India, there was no Bible in the Indian languages. So William Carey and his friends were translating the Bible and Henry Martin joined them. While he was doing this, he realized that there were many pastors and missionaries in Kolkata, but the rest of the country, there were not many. So he wanted to go and tell them about Jesus as well. And so he traveled to a place called Dinapur, which is in Patna in Bihar. And there he started staying and telling people about Jesus. Now, this is where he started speaking to the beggars. Remember, I, we began the story with 400 beggars listening to Henry Martin tell them about Jesus' love. It was in Dinapur in Patna, right? Henry realized that Jesus loves not just the English people, but all Indians and all people in the world. And so he, he was preaching not only to the English soldiers and officers, he was also preaching to the Indians, to the beggars, to various kinds of people. And he also started four schools where he was teaching children to read and write. After staying some years there, he was preaching, teaching, but also he was translating the Bible into what was then called as Hindustani. Today we call it as Urdu. And he was translating the New Testament into Urdu and he did it so well. Henry was gifted in the mind. He was very intelligent, but he also worked very hard. And his Urdu New Testament was very good. But his assistant called Sabbath was also translating the Bible to Arabic and Persian. Now Henry realized that this is not a very good translation. So he wanted to travel to Persia and make it better. But at this time, Henry realized that he was sick. He was sick with what was then known as consumption, a disease that is in the lungs, you know, and he was he was soon going to die. But you know what he did when he found out he was sick? Did he go home and take some rest? No, he wanted to go even work even harder to finish the work quickly. And so he took a ship from Kolkata all the way to Persia, which is known as today we call it as Iran, the country. And he took the ship with a lot of difficulty. He reached Iran and there he was really sick. But with the help of some experts in Persian, he started translating the New Testament and making it really well. Till the end of his life, he worked on his Persian New Testament. And then 
when he finished it, his health was almost gone. He was soon about to die. Finally, he decided, okay, I will go to England and take some rest. But as he was going on the way in a place in Turkey called Tokat, he passed away. Now, Henry had written in his diary some years ago, let me burn out for God. And God had taken that burden of Henry and actually made it to pass. Now, what do we learn from the story of Henry Martin? When Henry told people that he wanted to be a missionary, everyone thought he was making a mistake. He was wasting his life. But work that is done in the service of Jesus is never a wastage. Do we love Jesus as much? Secondly, when Henry thought that he could never be poor for the sake of Christ, that he loved his comforts way too much, reading the story of David Brainard, another missionary, was the means that God used to change Henry's heart. When we read the stories of missionaries or when we listen to the stories of missionaries, God changes our hearts as well. And that's why we are listening to this story. Henry surrounded himself with friends like John Sargent, like Charles Simeon, who inspired him for the work. And till the end of his life, they prayed for him, then they supported him. Do we surround ourselves with friends who love Jesus as much as we do? When we do all this, we can make a mark on this world for the sake of Jesus. Henry Martin's translations till today are considered really good for his time. And Henry's work continues to inspire many people to become missionaries. What about you? Hey Timmy, how was the missionary story? It was very nice, Uncle. About Henry Martin, I learned. You learned about Henry Martin? What did you learn? So many things. Finally, tell me if something touched your heart. Uh, all the missionary stories also touched my heart. Then, what did you decide? I decided to make a choice. Oh, to me, you decided to make a choice? Yes, uncle. Ha, ah, I'm really glad to me. Why, uncle? Because that is the aim of this VBS. That is going to glorify God. That is not the aim, that is theme. Ah, yeah, that is theme. But I'm talking about the aim. What is the aim? Aim is, through VBS, we must learn that you learn to make choice you learn, you learn to use your words and actions and make identity and uh, learn to use your talents, everything for the glory of God. Do you know why? Why? Because you were born to glorify God. I understood that, uncle. Children also must have understood. Hey, did you all understand? Looks like they have understood. They have very, very clearly understood. We are born to glorify God, children. Sometimes you may wonder why I am born. Sometimes people can call you names. Doggy, catty, coggy. I didn't tell all that. I don't want you to tell that. Uncle doesn't want me to tell all that. You also don't tell that. Okay. <laughs> At that time, you must understand. Okay, whatever people think, let them think. But I am born to glorify God. I will always glorify God using my words, my actions, and I will use my talents. And that is my identity. This is a choice which I make. That is to glorify God. This is how you should live from today onwards forever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. What is this? You started singing now and continuing. I never sang. I am only saying forever. You never sang. Huh? Uncle never sang. That they don't. Forever, you should keep these things in your mind. I will also do, Uncle. Yes, that is what the expectation of God is. And when you do that, you will start respecting yourself. Others will start respecting yourself. You will become a joy to everyone and then you will enjoy life. Am I to me? What is that? You will, you will rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Nice song. Nice, no? What about one VBS song you sing? What about the VBS song you learnt? Why don't you sing? That I will sing afterwards. Why? Because 
I have to do some actions. <laughs> I have to do some actions. No, children, you also do actions. Don't forget the song. Practice very well. And God be with you. And God bless you. And once again, we will meet next tomorrow. No, next VBS. <laughs> so soon VBS is ending. So soon VBS is ending. But all the videos, all these VBS things are there in the online. Anytime you can watch. I am also going to watch. Okay. And you can watch Timmy in his channel also. Do you know? Timmy, why don't you tell your channel's name? My channel's name is Tim Tom Tube. Tim Tom Tube. Remember that? Hey, many of them remember. Already they saw you in your YouTube channel. Oh, really, uncle? Once again, I will make new, new stories and they should comment and share. Comment and like. Ah, they should comment and like. That is the job they have. They don't have any other job. They have many jobs, sir. Huh? Yeah, they have many jobs. They have to go to Sunday school. Am I right? Sundays, you have to go to Sunday school. And um, Mondays... You have to go to Monday school. Hey, no Monday school. They have to go to school. Tomorrow, you should go to school. But it is holiday now. How they will go? Uh, holiday, you should not go. Holiday, you should not go. Enjoy. When the school opens, you should study well and you should be a witness for Jesus. That is what I like. Even I like. Even Jesus likes. Oh, God be with you. I we really enjoyed talking to you. Even I really enjoy talking to them. Even I really enjoy talking to them. Then say bye. Thank you. Thank you, children. Bye. Thank you, children. Bye. Hi, children. I hope you really enjoyed the five days that you spent with us. I hope you really enjoy the new songs, the new stories and of course stories of missionaries who loved our country, loved our people. And I know that you have really been impacted. Now that you have a job to do because we want to know and we want to hear from you. For doing that, you have to click the link below in the description box so that we will know how it, this program has really helped you or not. Now, you know, our aim is that you would s grow spiritually in the Lord Jesus Christ and also that would help in the formation of your character. Not only that, you would learn a little bit of skills that were taught in this short time. I hope you enjoyed the craft sessions of each day. I would like to challenge the parents as well. Dear parents, as you sat with your children, Please pray for our country and the people groups of our country because many, many people groups are still to be reached with the gospel. And for that we need fervent prayers as a family. Along with your children, you can pray for people groups who are still unreached. And also probably you can support uh, missions who are doing this kind of work in bringing the gospel and the scriptures to yet unreached people groups and we would like to uh, be in touch with you and uh, we would like you to do whatever it takes so that the gospel will reach the last corners of our country and uh, one suggestion that came to my mind is probably you can think of having a vacation in one of our mission fields visit our mission fields with people groups there and see and I'm sure as you take the children along, it will leave a very impressive mark in their minds. And uh, when they grow up, probably they will, uh, you know, and time comes, they will accept the Lord's call in their life too and be part of what God wants them to do. So let's pray together. Gracious God, our Father, we want to thank you and praise you for this wonderful time that you've given to us. Father, we pray that you would bless us lord and you would continue to be gracious on us especially we pray for the children who have learned new things new songs and learned stories from the word of god and also lord missionary stories i pray lord that you will continue to work in their hearts and we pray for parents even as they help the children lord to know you better we pray that you will uh, bless them as well lord give them all the grace that is needed and together lord as your children 
Lord, we will be able to lift the name of Jesus in our country so that many people will come to know you in the coming days. We thank you and praise you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So children, we'll see you next year. Until then, bye.